Hello, welcome to Maya 101. And this is Michael. In this video, I wanted to, now that we've done kind of a touch on most of the topics that I would do in like a introduction to Maya class, we've talked about modeling and modeling tools, and hopefully you're still exploring these mesh menus and looking at more commands and tools and things that we didn't necessarily talk about in the videos, but are still useful to know. Uh, we've talked about modeling tools. We've talked about uh, animation with the bouncing ball and things. We've talked about textures. We went through the process of creating that uh, pencil model. We UV'd it, we UV'd it, we textured it, and then brought in the Substance Painter for those textures. And talked about rendering, a little bit about Arnold. So lots of kind of touches on different topics. And so for this, this video here, I thought we would do a little bit of an introduction to skeletons. So we talked about animation and we did the bouncing ball. And that's taking that sphere, that ball, and just making it look like it bounces, you know, without doing much in the way of anything complicated. Now, if you wanted to animate a character, for example, or anything that's, uh, that needs to bend or, or move, like if you had a, a human hand, for example, and it had individual fingers, and you wanted to animate something like that, like The Thing in Wednesday, if, you, if you're familiar with that show, um, then that's going to require a skeleton so that you can animate uh, like a, an armature on a model. So we're going to talk about skeletons today. And so in my class, I kind of go through it step by step, starting with something simple, going to something a little more complicated, and then a little bit more complicated from there. And so we're going to do that here today. So I'm going to open up a file. So a door. It's probably the most simple thing you can animate. You don't necessarily have to have a skeleton to animate a door, but I thought it was a good example to start with. Now, I do have a little bit of a story with this, so I'll get to that in a second. So when it comes to using a skeleton, we have to change our menu set. Here you go. I moused over this drop-down menu set menu. <laughs> menu set menu. Okay, that's a weird name for it, but that's what it is. It's the menu set drop-down. If I click it, we have different options for which set of menus we're focused on. I'm usually focused on modeling for the most part, but for this, we're going to move to rigging. So if I choose the rigging menu set, our menus up here change. We no longer have mesh tools and edit mesh and so on. Now I have skeleton and skin and constrain and cache and so on. So we have some different options here. So the skeleton menu, if I pull this off for a second, this has a lot of our skeleton creation tools, such as the first one here for creating joints. So the process of setting up a model with a skeleton is called rigging. Okay, rigging is probably one of the more complex things you could do in Maya in general. Rigging is a job in and of itself. And a lot of these things that we've talked about can be jobs that you find out there in the world. You can be a 3D modeler as a job. You could be a texture artist as a job. You know, you could be a rendering artist or a lighting artist and so on. Those are all individual jobs you could potentially find out there. And a rigging uh, artist or a technical artist is another way that it's been referred to. That is a job in and of itself because rigging is very complex. And every project that has any sort of animation need needs someone who can rig. And it's hard. It's, def it's definitely something very hard. Now, what we're going to do today is not hard, okay, we'll say that, but rigging very quickly expands to much more complex things. If you do a, a search on YouTube here for, you know, rigging a character, you're going to find lots of different ways of doing it with varying complexity. Some ways are more simple, but you don't have a whole lot of options as far as how you can animate that character. Other ways are quite complex with lots of bells and whistles and what you can do. And the more complex it gets, it's just... It gets very huge really quickly. But we're going to start out slow, small. This is Maya 101, not Maya 601 or whatever. <laughs> we're going to start out here really quickly, and not quickly, uh, simply, with a very simple skeleton for this door. Okay? So I'm going to go over here to the, I'm mean, again, skeleton menu, create joints. And the way this create joints tool works, just go over here to the side. It's essentially like drawing a curve or something. You can create a string of joints. And the joints are the circular forms. And then these triangular shapes or pyramid shapes in between are the bones. 
press the enter key, it finishes making the skeleton. You see up here on the outliner, I have joint one. If I hold shift and click this little plus icon to expand, it'll expand all the chain. And so this is using parenting, if you were familiar with that from before, where joint 11 is parented to joint 10, which is parenting to joint 9, and so on, all the way up the chain. So whatever joint you choose, and if you were to rotate it or whatever, you're going to rotate every joint that's parented to that joint along the chain. So everything below joint 4, in this case, is also rotating where joint 4 rotates. Okay. So joint 1 here is the very top of the chain. Everything goes with it. So let me click this. If you can imagine, just I'm just going to kind of look at it from the side here, but like here's like say for example a shoulder or a clavicle, and here it goes up to the shoulder, and then down to the elbow, and then down to the wrist, and then it can start branching out in the fingers and things. This is how you would essentially make a skeleton, and then here's the, how the elbow would rotate. You know, here's how the shoulder would rotate, and so on. Okay, so that's the starting point of making a skeleton. Now for this door, we don't need a complex skeleton with lots of fingers and things. So I'm just going to go to Create Joints here at the very top of the Skeleton menu. I'm going to hold down the X key, left click and drag. You'll notice it's snapping to the grid. I'm just going to snap it right there to the origin of my scene. And I'll just go ahead and hit Enter, and that kind of completes the skeleton. And you might be thinking, that's not a very complex skeleton. There's only one joint. That's okay. Uh, this model of a door is a very simple model. You see here in the outliner, I have a door group and then different objects within the door with a doorknob group here within with the little pieces of the doorknob and so on. And this door is set up very well for exporting, okay, because the bottom left of the door is at the origin of the scene, which is what you usually would want, because it can then rotate at that point, right? Now, I'm, the story I have to tell about rigging a door is, you know, if, if you just want a door to open, you know, I have my joint here. Once I attach this door to this joint and just rotate it, it's going to open like a door does. So, mission accomplished, right? However, the story I have is that the video game I was working on had doors, and they wanted the character to be able to walk up to the door and open it, right? Simple. However, the programmers, you know, the people in charge of the code, told us artists that, hey, in order to, for the character to reach for the doorknob, there needs to be something there for it to target and reach for, because that's how the code works. They're going to, it's going to target this thing where the hand goes, so the, the hand could go anywhere so that they, it could reach it for different things, you know, from different angles. So for the doorknob, I need something there for the hand to reach for. So if you could, in your skeletons for the door, place a joint there. It doesn't serve any purpose other than for the character's model to reach for that joint and call that joint knob which is an awful name, but that's what he asked me to call it. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to create a second skeleton menu, create joints, or right here where I have this broken off already, create joints. And I'm going to just press the space bar and go to my front view so I can get this head on view. I click and drag and press four for wireframe. Now you see I've placed my joint and it's a little bit off. I can middle click and drag to again, move it. So I'm just going to kind of center it there on my doorknob, something like this, okay, and press enter. All right, so now I have a joint there, which is kind of hidden inside everything, and then a joint down here. Now joints, you can see here, I can't see my knob, my doorknob joint. It's hidden by everything. So what I'm going to do is in my, I'll just close this, in my uh, view panel here, this is what I call it, I can go to view, oh, sorry, not view, shading, so I want shading, x-ray joints. And we'll put x-ray joints on, then I can see joints through the model. So they don't get obscured by the mesh. And so whenever we're working with joints, you probably always want to have x-ray joints turned on so that you can always see your joints when they're inside the meshes, because usually that's where they are, is inside your mesh. Okay, so I'm going to rename these. So I have joint 2 up here. I'll rename this to be knob, like I was asked to do. And then I have the root joint. This is what they call the, the topmost joint, the joint that controls everything. That is the root joint. I'll double click joint 1 and call it root. Now, some companies and, and studios may have different naming conventions and how they want. But what I've always heard is that, in, in my experience anyway, is that that first number one joint, that's the root 
joint. We call it root. So then everyone knows that's the root. That's where everything starts. And also Maya uses that word root in its commands. Like if I were to go to skeleton, there is re-root skeleton. See that? So you can choose a different joint in a skeleton chain to be the new root. And so that's what this will let you do. We're not doing it right now, but just so you know, that's where that, that word comes into play. So this joint is all just hanging out by itself. And if this joint were to move or rotate, it's not affecting this joint at all because they're not connected. You notice they're not uh, apparented or anything like this. So I'm going to parent the knob joint to the root joint. So I'll select the knob joint first, hold shift and select the root joint. Now notice that joints have what's called selection priority. Meaning if, if I want to select this door mesh, the actual model, if I mouse or drag a box around the mesh, but there's a joint in that box, the joint gets priority. It will not select the mesh. And that can be a little annoying sometimes if you really want to select the mesh, but instead you're selecting the joint all the time. So you just have to be careful that, you know, if you're looking at, you know, the, the mesh and there's a joint next to it, you have to just make sure your mouse is not on the joint and you select it and then you can select the mesh. Or if you are mousing, uh, dragging a box like this, you have to be careful not to include the joint and then you can select the mesh, okay? But the joints have joint uh, selection priority. And I'm sure you can change that somewhere, but what I usually do, if I do have an issue and I can't not select joints, I can go to show and just turn off joints for a second. So the joints are hidden now. And I can just drag a box and select my mesh and then go back to show and return the joints back to visibility again. So anyway, so I can just mouse over these real quick and grab them. I don't have to worry about also selecting the mesh. That's the point. Anyway, I'll grab my knob joint, shift select my root joint and press P for parent. And so now they are parented together. So if I grab my root joint and rotate it like this, the knob joint also rotates with the root. Okay, so we got that settled. Now the door itself is not being affected by the skeleton at all. So there's different ways of applying a skeleton to a model. And it depends on the model, really. But for something like this, this is the door. This, this model is not going to flex or bend. I'm not asking, you know, like a finger can, you know, you can turn your finger or bend your finger. And ha so you, in order for a finger to bend, you need a joint at each knuckle, right? In order for that rotation to happen. We're not doing anything like that. This is just a door that needs to swing open. So because the door is a... Uh, what I would call a hard surface. It's not a deforming surface. I can simply select the door group that I have, hold shift and select the root joint, okay, and press P to parent. So now the door is also parented to the root joint just like the knob is parented to the root joint. So now I have the root joint selected now and then I rotate it, the door goes with it. And also the, that knob joint is swinging with the knob on the door. All right, very good. And that's essentially all there is to it for this door. It's a very uh, simple first example of rigging an object. Okay. Now I understand if you're watching this, like, hey, I don't have your Maya scenes to do this with, but hopefully just watching you get the idea. Okay, that's, that's hopefully what I'm getting at. Uh, obviously, I want you to make sure if you feel like it, please feel free to make your own simple door. Like it's all you really need is a cube. You know, just kind of stretch it like this into a rectangular shape. And if you really want a knob, you do all, your, all these are spheres, you know, nothing too fancy. So if you wanted to make something similar to this and kind of do this, you can go back and watch this section of the video again and kind of follow along. Please feel free. I definitely encourage you. And as for the rest of the video series, too, if you feel like you wanted to kind of follow along, even though I don't have the files available to download or anything, these shapes that we're working with today are relatively simple. Maybe not the last one. You'll get, we'll get there. But so let's, with that in mind, let's go ahead and go to the second one. Just give me a second. All right, so here I have a ceiling fan. So it's a little bit more complicated, okay? But it's not super complicated. Hopefully, if you've been practicing modeling, you know, you can see here, this is mostly a cylinder shape that's kind of been doing some extrudes with to kind of get this thing on top. And then down here for the kind of, this is like an old fashioned ceiling fan, like what I grew up with in, from the 80s. <laughs> this is a big, large 
uh, glass bulb here with this kind of this cap on the end for changing the light bulb. And then I have this a string of spheres. That's all this is. A string of spheres coming down in like a chain. And then for the blades, again, relatively simple. You can see here how they're made. Just take up a cube or something and bevel some corners and things and, and extrude some pieces out to get kind of this blade shape. And then I've duplicated them around the origin. Now, one thing I will point out for the ceiling fan is I have, again, everything kind of centered at the origin. And in this case, it's beneath the grid because if this object were to be exported from Maya and put in a scene, it would be seen from above, you know, and it's attached to the ceiling. So the pivot point, the place where everything will be kind of placed from, is at the origin of the scene. So that's why this is set up here beneath the grid. This is how you would do that. So hopefully it's not too hard to kind of recreate for yourself if you wish to. So for as far as rigging goes, and feel free to pause the video, by the way, if you wanted to do that, do that and come back, no problem. So for rigging this, though, we got to think about now, we have some several moving parts. I mean, nothing is, um, the, these, the blades and things are not going to be bending and stuff or flexing, except we do have this chain. So this chain uh, coming down here, we can imagine, if you can imagine in your mind, a ceiling fan and it, the blades are spinning and let's say like, if it's anything like mine, <laughs> the ceiling fan that I had growing up, the, it's not necessarily 100% you know, tightened to the ceiling, and so it, it kind of wobbles a little bit as it spins, as the fan spins, and the chain kind of then kind of starts to kind of wave back and forth in a, in a funny little pattern as the momentum of the blades pick up through the chain. And I'm, I want to try to simulate that here. So we are going to actually rig this chain in a different manner then we did the door. The door was just a parent, simple parent procedure. We're going to do something a little bit different, okay? But we need to think about how this is going to be rigged. So now we have a couple moving parts. So first of all, we need our root joint, okay? So skeleton menu, create joints. Again, I'll grid snap to the origin and press enter. Just let that be my first joint. You'll notice that it's being obscured by the mesh because I opened a new scene. So shading x-ray joints. There we go. Now I can see the joint through the mesh. I'll go ahead and name it root. Okay. So you want to think to yourself, you know, how is this going to work? So obviously these blades are going to spin, right? The, so we need a joint for these blades to connect to. So just like the door had to swing open and close from the, the rotation of a joint in the corner, we're going to rotate the ceiling fan blades with a joint in the middle. So I can either create a new joint or I can just uh, hold shift and move this joint down. That's just gonna duplicate this joint by, by holding shift and moving it down. And I'll rename this one to be, you know, fan, okay? And I can go ahead and just parent it to the root. So we know that the root's here at the top and we have our fan joint here. And this root, we're going to, this root, we're going to, not root, this joint, excuse me, we're going to rotate, and all these fan blades are going to rotate with it. Okay, so that's bare minimum done, right? That's all we needed to do as far as a skeleton for this. However, like I said, I wanted to do something with this chain. If I press the four key, you can actually see the chain extends further up into the mesh with the idea that if I wanted to, I could just say and pull that chain down, and it, it will have more chain to show. It's not just cut off right there at where it meets the fan. It has that option to kind of move a little bit. So we want to have that functionality where you need a joint here to move up and down for pulling on the chain, right? But then like I said, I also want the chain to be able to kind of wobble. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press the space bar. I'm going to move to my front view. I'll press the four key so I can see it. So here's my chain. So I'm going to create a joint chain. All right, so go to Skeleton, Create Joints. And if I go over here, I'll just show you. If I click once, click again, click again, you know, everything, all these joints are in a sequence or a chain of joints. If I press, if I click, left click to place a joint and hold Shift and place an, and hold another joint, you'll notice that it is, a, it is sticking to a straight line. See that? So if I hold Shift, hold Shift while I'm clicking, I can be assured I'm placing these in a straight line. So we're gonna do that. 
And you'll notice my joints might be a little big. We can change that too if you want to. But I'm going to place my first joint here at the top of the chain. And I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to display, uh, let's see, animation. So display menu, animation, joint size. I'm just going to lower this down a bit. So if your joints are seem like they're too small or too big, you can always decrease or, or increase their size here. Okay. So middle click and drag, I can reposition this joint here. And by the way, I have a video, a couple of videos, going over the Create Joints tool in more detail if you're curious. Hold Shift again. Whoops, make sure I'm... I'll try that again. Left click. Hold Shift. There we go. So I'm just going to kind of place this relatively equal distance apart. You know, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not being super um, accurate. Just going to place them relatively the same distance apart all the way down. If you go beyond the chain, that's okay. Hit enter. There we go. Now, if I go back to my perspective, you'll notice that the joint, the joint chain was placed at the origin and not necessarily at the chain. I'm just going to move it over. There we go. Just kind of make sure it's centered there on the chain. If I need to go, I'll go to the top view and I'll really make sure it's right there. There we go. Dialed it in. All right, so there's my chain of joints. If I hold shift, you can see there. And, you know, I'll name the first one chain one. If you really want to go through and name them all, it's probably a good idea because that's uh, recommended. You always name your joints so you know what they are. But chain one all the way down to chain 11. <laughs> we'll just say I named them all. Okay, so I have my root joint up here, which has, oops, I somehow lost my x-ray joints. There it is with the fan joint down there, okay? And then I have my chain of joints there. Now, this is what I'd always quiz my students on. Which of these two joints should I parent my chain joints to? Should this be parented to the fan or to the root? Some students will say the fan, some students will say the root. The correct answer is the root and not the fan joint because remember, this fan joint is gonna be spinning like this, right? And so if I were to grab the chain and parent it to the fan joint, and then I'm rotating the fan, my chain is rotating all around like this too. But the chain, as far as how it's actually, you know, stuck here, it's actually just going to stay right there while the blades spin. So the actual joint it should parent to is the root joint up here. So this is going to kind of offshoot all the way down to here. So you see you can have multiple joints splitting from a single other joint. This is how you're going to do, of course, you know, legs coming off of the pelvis or arms coming off of the, the spine. So you're going to have two arms coming off of the spine joints and that kind of thing in the character, which we're going to get to in a bit. So, so a little bit more complicated of a joint skeleton system here compared to the door, but hey, that's okay. Things are going to get more complicated. That's not a big deal. So for these rigid bodies, these things that are not going to be moving or spinning or anything, I'm just going to grab this piece. This is the base mesh. Shift click my root joint and press P to parent. So this mesh is parented to the root joint. Then I have my blades group here, all my ceiling fan blades. I'll shift click the fan joint and press P to parent. So now my fan joint will rotate and my blades will also rotate. Now, when it comes to the chain, it's a little bit of a different story. We can't just parent them, okay? It's not gonna work. And if you did parent them, you just like, parent individual spheres to each joint. It's kind of painstaking. So we're going to do a different rigging system here. Instead of parenting meshes to joints for the chain here, we're going to do something else. I'm just going to grab the chain and, okay, so I have a chain group here. I'm actually going to expand and open the chain group, all these spheres. I'm going to select the top sphere, hold shift and select the bottom sphere. I have all the spheres selected. And then I'm going to right click or sorry, control click chain one to select the chain one skeleton last. So that's the order. All the meshes first, chain one skeleton last. Okay, not the root or the fan, but the chain skeleton. So I'm just gonna do that again just to make sure because my students sometimes didn't quite follow along. And again, it always feel free you can you know rewind it and go back. I'll set my first sphere in the list, hold shift and select the last and then control click chain one, there we go. So instead of doing parenting, 
press the 4 key, maybe so if it's a little bit easier to see it or not. I'll go to the skin menu. So skinning, in the rigging terms, is the, another process for applying uh, a joint chain to a mesh in a way that it can bend. This is what we would do for a character as well that needs to bend at the elbows, bend at the waist, and so on. You would need to skin this, the character with a joint, a joint chain or a skeleton. So we're got, we have these objects selected in this order. Spheres first. Control click chain one there to select it last. Skin. Bind skin. So we're binding the skin to the joints. Let me go into the options because we don't necessarily want the defaults. So edit, reset settings. So these are the defaults, okay, as this is. So I'm binding to a joint hierarchy. That's right, so a joint chain, that's what that means. And by the way, I do have a video going over this too on my channel, but we're just gonna go over here in, in a simple way. So I'm binding to the joint hierarchy. Yep, that's what we want. Now, as far as max influences go, the default is five, which, which what that means is, is that every vertex in these spheres could be affected by up to five different joints. That's kind of excessive, don't necessarily need that. So I'm gonna lower this down to like two. We don't necessarily need to have multiple, like more than two joints affecting any particular vertex at a time. All right, and then other than that, I think it's pretty good. We're just gonna use that and hit apply and close. All right, so you'll notice that what happens with the default settings, the skeleton does turn colors. So each joint has a different color associated with it. And then if we were to grab, say, a joint at random and rotate it, you can see that the joint chain bends where that joint is. So I'm press 5P for shaded here. So I can grab this and bend it, and that joint chain bends. So what's the thing that's nice about this, I'll go ahead and collapse the chain here and expand this chain of joints. So this, you know, I can rotate this joint like this. And it kind of bends, it kind of crooks there like an elbow. But what I want to do is actually have this kind of twirl a little bit. So if I were to actually grab, say, joint 10 and hold shift and select all the way up to joint 3 and rotate them, hey, look at that. We get more of a wagging motion. See that? And so what I would like to get whenever this thing is spinning is for the ceiling fan chain to kind of be doing this number. So it looks like it's it's because of the spinning of the fan, the momentum there, and it's, it's kind of wobbling a little bit. We're getting this kind of effect with the chain. That's the idea. So again, using a skinning method, we're able to skin this chain with a joint chain and have that kind of effect. Okay, so in this particular case, rigging is complete. Now, we didn't really do this for the door because it's pretty simple, but let's go ahead and animate this ceiling fan. So I'm actually, I need my animation controls, which I have hidden right now. So I'll go to Windows, UI Elements. I'm going to break this off here and turn on Time Slider and Range Slider. Okay. So you might should remember this from the previous video for the bouncing ball. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have, what I'm actually going to make here, this is what's going to be called a looping animation. So an animation that loops. So it can be a relatively short sequence, so a short number of frames. Because if you imagine the ceiling fan spinning for, say, you know, 20, 30 minutes, and you're like, okay, I'm going to animate this thing, you'd have to animate hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of frames to kind of make it keep going, okay? But what we're actually going to do is create a short, a short animation that can just be repeated over and over again, and it looks like the fan is still spinning indefinitely. That's the idea. So for a looping animation, let's just do, let's just say like a, I don't know, maybe a 20 frame or, because one second, if you remember, in video anyway, is 30 frames. So let's do like a half a second. Doesn't have to be, because these things spin pretty quick usually. So I'm going to grab my fan joint. There it is. So at frame one, if you remember the animation controls, shift E to set a keyframe for rotation here with a rotation values of zero. And then I'll go to frame 15, and we'll do a rotation value, let's do a 180. Okay, so 180. Again, I can shift E. So if I press play here, it spins to 180. So what we can do is change our range slider down to only show those 15 frames, like this. So then rewind and press play. 
Now, we're, so what we're getting here is the animation curve that we created automatically kind of bends. If you remember this again from the bouncing ball. So if I go to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. Okay, so you can see here that I rotate Y, how it goes this little S curve. We're going to just change this. If you remember, we did this before, tangent. We're going to change this to linear. There it is. So tangents linear. So this is a straight line. Okay, so now, I have, now that we've done that, rewind and play. And just seems like it keeps going. Now, one thing you'll, you might notice a slight stutter. And the reason why is because at frame 1 and at frame 15, because we did 180 degrees, the sequence is actually looks the same for two frames in a row. Because it's going from frame 15 to frame 1, and they both look the same. And then it starts to rotate again. So if we actually cut off frame 15 and just did frame 14, so we're only looking at frame 1 to 14 and press play, now it looks continuous. You see that? So it's just a continuous spin, so it's just a looping animation. And in video games and things and movies, you can do that. You can just have an animation sequence just loop indefinitely, in, like in the background, while your characters are doing something else. Okay, so now that we have that, I want to have, again, like I was mentioning before, kind of a rocking motion. I'll put this back up to 15 again. So I want the ceiling, the ceiling fan as a whole to be kind of doing this like this. This is what my ceiling fan would do when I was growing up. It would kind of just rock a little bit like this. And I'd always be afraid it was going to fall off the ceiling. <laughs> so at frame one, then, I want this to be not set up straight like this. I want it to kind of be cocked over a little bit, not too much. We don't want it to be, like, really in danger of falling. So it's a slight amount there. And shift E. And then if I go to frame 15, if you remember, this is going to loop, right? So at frame 15, it should look like frame one. So at frame 15, I'm just going to go to frame 15 now. It's still cocked at that same angle. Shift E. All right, so halfway between 1 and 15 is approximately frame 7. So we'll just say 7 or 8, either one of these. And I'll just have it cocked a little bit the other way. Just a tiny bit. Shift E. So rewind and play. We're getting this kind of thing, right? But again, same idea. If I go back to the animation curve, go to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, and we look at our rotation here. So can I get this? Actually, that's, that's not that's not bad. We don't we don't necessarily want this to be a straight line because this is obviously curving back and forth. So I think we're okay there. So we'll just take off the fifteenth frame again because it's fifteen and one are both the same. Rewind and play. There we go. So our ceiling fan is not exactly hanging on super tight. <laughs> this is what I grew up with. All right. All right. So now we can worry about the joint chain. We want the joint chain to kind of swing back and forth a little bit. Or the, the, the chain of the ceiling fan. So I'm going to grab, because remember, because we're not actually doing the cha-choo motion. We're going up and down to turn the fan on or off. So we can actually just start our swing where the joint here is meeting the mesh of the fan. So joint 4 down to joint 11, we'll say. So I'm going to just grab all of those. Again, selecting joint 4, hold shift, and select joint 11. And I can just give it a little bit of a rotation there. Don't want to go too crazy. Don't want to do it like this. That's a little too much. Just want to have a really simple little swing like this. So something like this. All right, shift E. Go back to frame 15, don't forget, because frame 1 and 15 are the same, so they get that looping motion, so shift E again. And then again at frame 7 or 8, we do either one, or I might even do 8, I'll have it go the other way. Okay, shift E. So once again, we're going to take off frame 15 there, so we can just get that looping motion. And if you want to, you can also hide your joints, so show joints, so you can just see what it looks like without the joints involved. Rewind and play. Hey, there we go. So you just imagine this up in the in the ceiling behind your you know your scene, and it's just going like this, and the little chains wagging back and forth. And yeah, there you go. Not bad, not bad. So again, a simple joint chain. I bring it back. Show menu joints. Relatively simple, right there. Okay, so the next model I'm going to look at 
is a little bit more complex is a robot. It's like one of those uh, little metal toys from the 60s or something. Now this model I can't take credit for. I did not make this model. This is something I found online. So uh, hopefully that's okay. I'm just going to hide my animation stuff since I'm not going to be animating this right now. So I'm go to UI Elements and I'll hide Time Slider and Range Slider. Okay, so we're going to make like a little human character skeleton for this. It's going to be very simple. Okay, so nothing too crazy. I'm just going to put joints in all the all the joints. <laughs> put uh, skeletal joints in all the joints of the character so that it can bend and move around. And also talk a little bit about how to mirror joints. So let's say, for example, once you have an arm with a skeleton, you could just mirror it to the other side for the other arm. You don't have to make another one. And that way they can be both identical. So the first thing I'm going to do is press the space bar, go to the front view. I'm going to go to shading and make sure x-ray joints is turned on. And I'm going to go to skeleton, create joints. And I'm holding X key for grid snap. I'm going to place a joint there at the pelvis. You'll notice that in this case, I have the character lined up and scaled even so that the pelvis is right there at a grid point. But it's not, not always going to be the case. So sometimes you may have to move this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is create a couple of spine joints from this uh, root joint. So hold shift so it goes straight up and down. I'm going to click here and so for this kind of block space here for the tummy I'll have a joint there. And then it has this big space, this big piece for the torso. I'll have a joint there. And then we have the neck. Hold, up, hold shift again. Click and drag. And you have a joint there. And press enter. Back to my perspective view. I need to make sure x-ray joints is turned on here as well. You'll notice again I might need to move this back a little because it's lined up to the origin not necessarily lined up to the robot so that's my spine so I'm gonna go ahead and name these so again root one root is joint one root and I'll call this one spine one and then this one can be spine two and this last one I'll just call simply neck okay now for a character that's not a robot, that has a little bit more movement to them, a little bit more bend in their backbone, you might need more joints than just what we have here. But because this one's a robot, it's like this big block for a chest and doesn't really bend, we only have the one. Again, we're keeping it simple for this lesson. All right, so now I'll go back to this, the front view and I'll create an arm skeleton. So skeleton, joint, create joints, and if I press the 4 key for wireframe, you can see here the shoulder joint, whoops, there we go. The shoulder is actually a sphere. So I'm just going to eyeball my joint that I'm placing to be right there in the middle of that sphere. That's the idea for this, uh, this character here. Now for a human character that doesn't have like spheres where their joints are, you might have to, you know, really look at how it's made and how, where the joint should actually be placed. But for this sake, we have these little uh, nice helpers, these spheres for placing each joint. For the elbow, I might switch to my side view. And you'll notice when I go to the side view that this joint was actually placed at the origin and not where the actual shoulder is. I'm just going to hold shift, I'm sorry, hold the middle mouse button and move this over a little bit. So it's more where this, this round circular circles are kind of coming in. Okay, and then for the elbow, here we go, here's a sphere right there. I'll place a joint there. And then as we come down here, it might be hard to tell, but this is like where the wrist is. Okay, so I'm just going to place a joint there as well for the hand. Now one thing I want you to look at, if you will, it might be hard to see. There's a lot of different lines here. Let me do this. There we go. So notice how the elbow joint, the this crosshair, this plus sign is rotated along and aiming toward the next joint. So this is the shoulder up here, aiming toward the elbow. Is the elbows aiming toward the wrist, and the wrist though is just straight up and down. What I'd like the wrist joint to do is actually aim this way. So you notice as I, if I make another joint down here, this joint actually rotates and aims down this direction. Let me actually undo that. And I'll just place another joint like this. And then once I've done that, I place the joint, and this is this wrist joint is now rotated toward the end of the hand. I can just hit delete. Because what that's all I really wanted that joint to do was to orient this joint to now face toward this direction. 
All right, back to my, my uh, perspective view. You can see here we're not quite centered on the elbow, so I'll move this elbow joint over. I'll grab the wrist joint and move it over, be a little more center. Okay, so here's our shoulder joint. So again, we can name these, and, th and this is going to be his right shoulder, okay? I always try to name the joints R for right shoulder. So I, what I usually do is a lowercase r, then capital S shoulder, um, and then same for the elbow, so R uh, elbow, and then R wrist. You can do capital R too, it's not a big deal. Just however you want to name it. Okay, and then I'm going to parent this jo this shoulder joint to the spine. So I'm, and I don't want to parent it to the neck because the neck I'm going to rotate for the head. And if I rotate the head, I don't want the arm to always rotate with it. So I'm going to parent it to this spine joint down here, spine two in this case, and press P. So you notice we have this offshoot from spine two to the shoulder. All right, so I can mirror this arm to the other side. So I can go with this arm, the shoulder, uh, joints selected. I can go to Skeleton, Mirror Joints, Options. So, Edit, Reset Settings. So it says Mirror Across, XY, YZ, or XZ. So how do we know which direction we want to mirror across? So we're mirroring across from this side to this side. So if I were to make a plane, for example, here, and rotate it like this, There we go. So this is the plane we're rotating, we're mir or sorry, we're mirroring across. So up is Y and forward is Z. So it's the Y Z plane that we're mirroring across, not the Y X or something like this. So this is how we can tell. And if you want to make a plane like this, to use as a visual aid for yourself, that's fine. So if the character was facing like this direction instead of facing the direction it is and we're mirroring across this way, <laughs> hopefully my mouse movements make sense, then that plane would be the YX plane. But we're doing the YZ plane in this case. I'm going to select that as my option, YZ. I can delete the plane now and make sure I have the shoulder joint selected. And then I can rename these new joints. So I can say search for a letter R for right and replace with the letter L for left and mirror. So now I have L shoulder. <laughs> Let me replace that last L, L with an R. There we go. That might be one uh, plus for doing a capital R instead of a lowercase R. It won't replace the end of the word shoulder. Left shoulder, left elbow, left list. <laughs> capital L would probably work better. There we go. Left wrist. All right. So that, now that's mirrored across, we can do the same kind of treatment for the legs. So I'll go ahead and go to Skeleton, Create Joints. I'm going to switch to my front view. Again, we have these nice handy spheres that we can use to kind of eyeball where the center is. I like to go in wireframe for that. This helps me out to kind of really see the center, where the actual center point would be. And then we're down here at another sphere. Hopefully you can kind of see that easier in wireframe again. So left click and place a joint there. And then at the base, again, where the kind of ankle would be, I'll place a joint there. Now, if I go to the side view, once again, you'll notice that we need to reorient this. So I'm just going to hit enter and move my joints to the right. Again, we need to see the sphere. That probably be easier. There we go. And then I'm going to move my knee over like this. Now, because I don't want to just do this, you'll notice that the knee does not change orientation to face the ankle, which is important. I'm actually going to rotate my knee joint to put my ankle joint in place. So it's going to be rotating this over like this, so it's more around the ankle position for the foot. Okay. So there's my leg joint chain. So again, same treatment. This time I'll learn my lesson. I'll do the capital R, and I'll do I'll call this one right hip. Then we have right knee and right ankle. 
I, I, and later on I'll go back and rename the other stuff to be capitals as well. But I'll select my right hip and shift select the root joint and press P. So now my root joint has this offshoot coming off to the right hip. And I can mirror this across again. I'll go to skeleton, mirror joints, here it is. And because I replaced it with a capital R, let me do that here as well, capital R, replace that with a capital L, still going across Y, Z, mirror. There we go, so now we have right hip, right knee, right ankle, left hip, left knee, left ankle. Yeah, capitals makes it better. Okay, so here we have a relatively simple rig. I mean, that's really all we really need for this kind of tinker toy robot shape. You could say, oh, we don't really have anything for the feet or anything. And yeah, feet could, you know, bend at the toe and things like this. But for something simple like this, I'm just going to do this. So, again, because this is not a human character, this is a robot that's not going to bend or anything. It's going to just kind of rotate on these hinges. I'm again going to use the parenting method for actually applying all these pieces to their respective joints. So, for example, I can select these pieces of the chest. And I'll hold shift and select the spine joint and press P to parent. This piece of the tummy, select that spine joint, press P to parent. Got this uh, cod piece thing, press select parent that to the root. And then we have these spheres. Now there's two kind of ways to think about this. If the sphere needs to rotate, then it needs to be parented to the joint. Well, I think it does. So I'm going to grab the thigh and uh, I won't do that piece. I'll do the back of the thigh here. So I have this hip sphere and then both halves of the thigh. And I'll shift select the hip joint and press P to parent. What that does is if I rotate this now, you'll see it all goes with it. See that? For the knee, I'll grab this kneecap, this sphere, and the calf and parent that to the knee joint. And then the foot, I'll parent to the ankle joint. And so now if I rotate the leg, this comes up, rotate the, el the knee, this goes down, I can rotate the foot. See that? Undo all that stuff. And I'll do the same for the rest of it. I'll grab the different halves of the thigh and the sphere there, press P to parent, the kneecap, the sphere, not that, and the calf, and parent it to the knee, the boot to the ankle. All right, and then for the arm, I have this sphere there and this uh, upper arm piece, both parented to the shoulder. This sphere and the forearm parented to the elbow. And then the wrist parented to the wrist, or the hand parented to the wrist, I should say. Same on the other side. Sphere and upper arm to the shoulder. Sphere of the elbow and the forearm to the elbow joint. And then hand to the wrist joint. And then for the head, we've got all this stuff for the head, including this thing. And we'll all parent that, this as well, this little sphere. I'll parent all these things to the neck joint. Now, if you want to make sure you've got everything, just grab the root joint and move it. If everything goes with it, then you have everything. So we're all good. And so now we can just pose. So we can have some fun. We can just grab different pieces. I can. If you rotate the root joint, you're going to rotate all of it. So keep that in mind. It's kind of like a puppet. He's staying alive. <laughs> staying alive. Staying alive. <laughs> okay. He's not quite touching the floor, so we've got some work to do. But anyway, you get the idea. You definitely have fun. You know, obviously, I know this is a model that you don't necessarily have on you right now. But, you know, if you do a search for robot model online to just kind of find something that's free, this is where I found this. So you probably find something like this or even find this particular model itself and go to town playing with it. Or you can just make some simple shapes. You know, this is kind of a cube shape and some cylinder shapes, you know, to make a kind of a robot person with little spheres between all the joints. And you can do the same method relatively quickly. Okay, so this is kind of a video going over skeletons and very, very simple. I want to point out very simple method of creating joint chains for different things, especially things like props like we did earlier. But this is kind of your, your the most simple character skeleton you could possibly make for something like this.
There are obviously a lot more things we can do to this to make it easier to control and move more fluidly and so on. Makes, we have things that we can do to make the feet you know, stay on the ground even if you were to rotate the hips. You know, they won't swing the whole legs out to the side with these certain controls we can do. But we're not going to get into all that in this particular video. In any case, this is uh, Michael McKinley for the Maya Tool Belt. Hopefully you enjoyed this kind of introduction to skeletons and this lesson for Maya 101. In our next part, we can continue and go a little bit further. Uh, maybe we'll talk about particle effects. I'm not sure if I'll do that for this or save that for something else. Let me know if that's something that's interested to, uh, interesting to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments, and I'll respond as quickly as I can. Thanks again for watching.